Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to my September show and tell. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to get every, into everything. And there's been a lot of suspense today because I was just filming some behind the scenes footage for channel members for our sparkly unicorn tier. And so I've been like setting up and like talking about equipment and getting everything ready to go for like a while now. <laughs> I'm so ready to actually sit and film this. So let's get into all of my favorite things, all of my things that I use. We're gonna talk decks and books, you know, near the end because I'm a big tease like that. We're gonna talk about a little bit of makeup stuff. We're gonna talk about some random things, some magic-y things, some memories. Let's get started. I'm gonna start off with YouTube things because this is the category I'm like most likely to forget. So I have to put it right in the very, very beginning. Then we're gonna talk memories and get into more stuff. So for YouTube things, I didn't watch a lot of like tarot and witchy YouTube this past month. I've been doing a lot of other things, working on some projects, getting a bunch of stuff done, and also kind of getting into a bit of a creative space. All right, let me share some of the highlights of my sort of YouTube experience in September. First of all, <laughs> Three Fat Readers actually had two different live streams in September, mostly because our August one got postponed. There was like hurricane-ness happening where Danny lives. That was no good. We told her we were just gonna postpone. <laughs> so we had our August Three Fat Readers chat at the very beginning of September. And then we also just had our September Three Fat Readers chat about a week ago. Uh, at the time I'm filming this, question mark? Yeah, so it's gonna have been like any, uh, almost two weeks by the time you see this. But anyways, we had our Three Fat Readers chats. So we had two of them. The first one we did was all about spreads. And I have to tell you, we had a great time with that chat, but the most funny moment ever was actually after we were all done recording. I think it was a couple of hours later and I think it was Dustin who sent Danny and I each a screenshot of how, of when Three Fat Readers had actually done a video on spreads like a year ago or something. <laughs> and we all cracked up because the thing is that's usually my trick. My trick is to suggest some topic for Three Fat Readers that like we've already done. And they're like, no, Lisa, we've already done that. <laughs> this time it wasn't me though. <laughs> it was all of us. <laughs> So that was kind of funny. Mind you, we've been doing the Three Fat Readers collaboration channel for a while now. And I guess I should give some context because if you're new here, hi, welcome. Uh, I talk about lots of tarot and witchy related things, heavily, heavily tarot uh, here on this space. But also I have a collaboration channel with my friends Danny over from the YouTube channel Danny Mystic and Dustin from the YouTube channel Modern Metaphysicae. And the three of us call ourselves very lovingly and affectionately the Three Fat Readers. And we get together about once a month to have a chat where we go live and we just talk about a topic related to tarot and we have the kind of conversation we would have normally like behind the scenes, but we just do it with the cameras on and it's awesome and it's super fun and I look forward to it every single month. So if you're not subscribed to Three Fat Readers, there's a link always in the description box down below so you can check that out. But we did a talk on spreads that was super fun. But actually the, my favorite thing from Three Fat Readers in September was actually our second chat, which was the chat where we talked all about our various approaches to collecting and using tarot and oracle decks. And what was great about that is that one of the things I love so much about my friendship with Danny and Dustin is that the three of us have such different approaches to our tarot practice to the way that we, the ways that we accumulate decks or collect decks or rehome decks or whatever. And it was just this really awesome, fun, lively conversation where we were able to really sort of compare notes in a public way so, so that you guys can all see also how different our approaches are. And it was just, it was a, a really, really fun conversation. I think we were on live for almost two hours. So it's quite a meaty video. If you want to check it out, I will definitely have that linked in the description box along with everything else that I'm going to be talking about today. So if you want to just hang out with us and watch our random discourse about our experiences collecting and working with tarot, you'll want to check that out for sure. Two other things are really exciting youtube shares that I wanted to share or at least reminisce on. These videos are kind of fun because I get to reflect on all the things that I especially loved and enjoyed or did in the month and it's kind of a neat record for me of my life which is kind of cool. Anyways, okay sorry, random side note. So Peggy made a collection video here on the channel and I helped, <laughs> I say helped loosely because I was really excited during the video and may have done a little too much chatting. <laughs> In the background, particularly because we tried a new sound setup for that video and it, it didn't work out the way that we thought it was working out in our heads. So Peggy was mic'd up and I was not. And I assumed my voice would carry a lot better than it did, but it didn't. So I'm like in the background and it's like Peggy's doing her video and you can just hear me <laughs> like 
the whole time. It was super fun to make that video and you guys seem to really enjoy it. Uh, but there was a lot of like me being excited and like, interjecting all the things about all the tarot because I nerd out right she pulls out a deck and she's she was let me be clear she wasn't just showing her collection she was also like brutally decluttering her collection so she'd be talking about a deck and I'd be like well yeah but this is what it's called and this is who it's by and like this is where you can get it and this is what's great about it and Peggy's like yeah it's going like if it was her making the video it would have been five minutes long <laughs> she's just like going 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 staying going <laughs> It was great. It was fantastic. If you want to see somebody who gives literally no craps about like anything and will just keep what she wants and ditch what she doesn't without a second thought, you'll enjoy that video quite a bit. But yeah, she went down from, I think she went, we counted the tallies at the beginning, at the end of the video. I think we counted out how many she kept versus how many she got rid of. But like, I think she kept like 25% at the most of what she had. It might be less than that. It was brutal. Anyways, okay, moving on. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So check that out. I'll have a link to that down below. Also, really, really exciting and incredible video that Don Michelle Bohotero put out. Now, I mean, I Don's my friend, so I'm super biased. However, this was really, really good, and I got goosebumps as soon as the video began. And if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's called All That Mattered. I will have a link to that also down below. But she basically shared with us one of her journal entries about her experience working with tarot and like some realizations or kind of, I guess, epiphany she was having as she was sort of exploring her relationship with her decks. And it was just really, really beautifully done. And I love that kind of thing. I think I love that kind of thing because I'm really nosy. So videos that like sound like they're somebody's personal thoughts and reflections about their practice and when it's done well, it's just, it's so great. So, and I know she worked her butt off on that video, and I know that from behind the scenes, but on the surface, just looking at it, it was so good. And I hope she does more of those because it was just really different. And I find that those are the kind of videos I gravitate towards in other like communities. Like when I'm watching other types of videos on other subjects, I do tend to gravitate towards ones that have that kind of personal peek into somebody's life or practice kind of take on it. And I really, really enjoyed that. So check that out. Okay, I'm gonna talk memories and then I'm gonna dive into all the things that are on the table in front of me. So a lot of stuff has been happening in September. Most, I would say notably for me personally. So I have been working on a, a video, a, a project that was originally just like, oh, I'll just make a video about this. And then as I started to kind of like dip into what I would wanna talk about in this video, it became a bigger and bigger and bigger thing. And now it's gotten quite, quite big. At least in my head, it's quite big. Um, but I'm working on a video all about cardstock. Now I am a cardstock nerd. I'm like happy to admit it. And I have become through this project an even bigger cardstock nerd than I even thought was actually possible. But basically this came about because somebody in my supportive tarot Facebook group asked a question about cardstock. And I found that I wrote this like big long book in response to them about like, they were trying to understand what the different types like were and like what we meant when we said stuff like rose petal and all this kind of thing. And so I was writing out this big long response and I'm like, you know what, I just need to make a video. And then when I started to like dig into the, to try to get some clarity around the subject of cardstock, it turned into this humongous rabbit hole where I realized it was actually a lot more complicated than I thought it was. And that a lot of the terms that we kind of conversationally use on YouTube are misleading or at least aren't helpful for clarifying what it all is about. Um, and we use a lot of jargon, right? We use we use a lot of terms like GSM and cardstock and, and, um, and uh, like, coding types and, and lamination and all these kinds of things and how it shuffles and whatever. And I just realized that I wanted to kind of distill all that information down into something that was hopefully useful to people who use tarot and buy tarot, but also maybe hopefully useful to creators in the community or, or budding creators in the community who maybe want to make decks to have an idea of kind of what everything is, kind of all the information coalesced into one video. And it's turned into this humongous project. I actually did a call out on my Instagram to, and I think on my Facebook group too, to reach out to any independent creator or any mass market publisher, honestly, who would be willing or able to share the specs, like the specific details about what GSM their decks are, what kind of coatings it was, and if they felt like they were comfortable to also share the printer they used, right? And I got this really great response from creators in the community and I've got so much like cool information to go off of. I'm basically using, the goal I guess in my head was to find out what different deck specs were so that I could pull from my own collection some examples to show you guys and to make sure I was speaking accurately about what type of coding it had and what the GSM was. But it became something so much more. And 
I just want to say right now, even before the video is even recorded or anything, like I'm still plotting it out, but right now I just want to say thank you to everybody who has tagged a creator, sent a creator my way, to all the creators who have reached out and so generously shared the information about your projects, your decks, your upcoming decks, your existing decks. I'm hoping to put together a bit of a, a thank you credit that I can include in the video or have on a handout or a printable or something. Um, I know I'm gonna miss some people because the messages were just flying, but just know that if you reached out in any way to help me with this project, thank you so much. I think it's, I'm hoping it's gonna be a valuable resource, but I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping to have that video out sometime in November, but we'll see because again, it turned into a much bigger project. I'm in communication with several printers who are helping me. There's just been a lot of pieces, moving parts to this. It's definitely the most complicated video project I've ever tried to do. So it's taking quite a bit of time, but I'm very, very excited because at the very least, I just feel like it's a good consumer information, creator information kind of resource to put together. And it, will, it helps me to learn all this stuff too, to make sure that I'm speaking about it as accurately as I can in my videos. So anyways, that was a whole cardstock memory nerd out thing but I'm like I'm building spreadsheets I'm talking to people so it's it take it actually took up a fair amount of time in September just sort of building the idea into something that could turn into a thing and like I'm still mapping things out so yeah it's I've got a lot of work left to do but it, it was a big thing for me in September so I'm really excited about that we also Peggy and I in September had the opportunity to dog sit for our son John and his girlfriend Kim's two dogs that they kind of co-own with some of Kim's family and they were all going out on a trip to Montreal. So we actually had Harvey and Lucy for like five days. They are the sweetest dogs and having them for that long was really great because they got to settle in, everybody got really cozy, they're very cuddly. But can I just say a long weekend, and it was a long weekend, it was the Labor Day weekend uh, of four dogs. It was a lot of dogs and I'm not complaining. It was amazing, but it was a lot of dogs. So I had done all this planning ahead of time and like after to make sure that I didn't have YouTube things to do that weekend because I wanted to just luxuriate with luxury. I wanted to just enjoy my time with the dogs. That was an awesome memory from September. The other thing that happened in September was that we were supposed to have Peggy's Fall Fest, our six hour live stream marathon, but then she lost her voice. And it happened kind of suddenly. We It's happened before. Um, usually around the fall time, it's we're pretty sure it's a seasonal allergy thing. We weren't going to take any chances. So we did go and get both tested for the plague that is affecting our world right now. And we both came back negative. But it was actually a really, really, really low stress, super easy, super gentle test it was like swish some salt water spit it in a tube like it was super easy so it in a way it was it's something I'm kind of grateful for because it demystified and kind of took any fear or whatever I had out of the process just to go through it because it was so easy and we got our results back really quickly and it was just it was just an, an incredible experience I recognize not everybody's in a community where they're going to have that exact same experience but I'm just feeling really blessed and lucky to be in a space where we can do that where we can do it easily and quickly and thank goodness for Canada, because <laughs> everything's just set up really well, at least where I live. And I, I'm not going to blanket statement. I'm sure there's lots of communities that this is a lot harder to do, but it was just a real great thing to be able to do and took some fear out of that for me personally. So that was notable that we went and had tests done. And, and Peggy, of course, is doing great. Her voice is almost completely back to normal. She's still got a bit of hoarseness, but she's, she's getting better. And she felt fine basically the whole time. She was just tired and she lost her voice. That was basically it. Normal allergy kind of stuff. I think too, just to circle back to the, the thing where we were dog sitting for an entire weekend, I took a really valuable lesson out of that experience because I basically planned ahead to have an entire weekend free. And if you don't know, I work full time. So I have a regular 40 hour a week day job. Um, I also help Peggy with her Etsy shop. So I do a lot of the packing and the shipping and the product photography and I communicate a lot with customers and all that kind of thing. So I do those things and then I also do YouTube. And between all three of those things, I have a tendency to get into a mindset or a habit of not leaving myself a lot of personal time. Thankfully, I'm very organized and I use a planner which keeps me organized and because I do, I feel like I'm able to do all of this and it doesn't hit that point of like burnout where I feel like I'm doing too much. I've been able to manage it really, really well but taking an entire long weekend off of all youtube -y things reminded me that I probably need to make a point of doing that at least once a month. Just take an entire weekend off <laughs> or at least a couple of days off of not worrying about responding to comments, not like making videos, not planning videos, not editing videos, just giving myself a bit of a breather here and there because it was really, really nice. It felt like an actual vacation. And I think that's because I realized that I haven't taken an entire full weekend off of YouTube-related 
work. This is my hobby, but still YouTube related work. I haven't taken an entire weekend off for, since I started my channel because I like to put out a certain amount of videos a week and I do most of my filming on the weekends. So to have been able to do that and the way that it made me feel, it made me feel like I had this all this time. It was just really noticeable in a good way, like in a positive way where I realized, okay, I need to actually prioritize like work-life balance, but also when it like loop YouTube into that work-life balance a little bit, because as much as I love doing this, there is an element of, of, there's a lot of time expenditure that goes into this, this, which is again, not a complaint. I feel so blessed to be able to do this. This is something I love to do. It's, it's one of my favorite things in my whole world right now, outside of like my family, like my, my wife and my dogs and that kind of stuff. Okay. Let's get talking about stuff. I've been like talking about all the other things like this whole time, but let's talk about stuff. So first I wanna talk about magic because I have two things in this category this month that I wanna show you guys. Um, and they're kind of semi-related. So the first of these, I think I showed this in my previous um, show and tell, but I was sent this really beautiful um, handmade book that is gorgeously bound. It has built-in ribbon bookmarks the whole bit. And I was really struggling with like book fear. I think I talked about this in my August show and tell. And Rebecca, one of our fellow YouTubers, Rebecca Getchell, I'll have a link. I'll try to remember to have a link to her channel down below, but if not, you can just look her up. Rebecca Getchell sent me a message on Facebook and she said, look, all you need to do is like open it up and like put something in it. She's like, why don't you get out some nice ink and like put a, put a blessing in it or put a, what did she say? Write your intentions for it or something. She said something along those lines and it like immediately sparked this inspiration to do a spell around it. And it was beautifully timed because also the um, channel members in the Magical Unicorn tier had requested to see my spell crafting routine or my spell casting routine. Um, so it was like the perfect timing, like that had come up and I was kind of thinking ahead about that. And then there's this idea of breaking my book fear. So I ended up actually turning on the camera for channel members and filming a whole video from like start to finish showing my entire process around spell crafting. And it was really, really great. And the spell that I wanted to do, and this is why it's so meaningful to me for September, is I wanted to do this really elaborate spell to basically bless this book, charge it, and, and put an intention into it for how I was gonna work with it. And it was the coolest, it was probably one of my favorite spells I've ever done. It just turned into this thing that was so empowering and beautiful. And I feel so good about this book as my book of shadows now. So I'm just gonna show you kind of what it looked like. But I put this, I kind of put this in here. I did a whole sigil crafting thing here. And then, let's see, there's not a lot to it yet. I just need to turn the page, there we go. And then this is from a Witch's Roots box. So is, um, this is from one of my uh, Witch's Moon boxes. I can't remember which one. And then and it's got like a protection thing. And then this is like just a really pretty piece of art that has a lot of meaning. I went into it in a lot more detail in the other video. And then I wrote this like book blessing, basically setting the intention that I wanted to feel comfortable messing this book up and not worrying about it kind of thing. And then basically I set it up like a bullet journal. So I put in some index pages here. And then when I was all done with the spell that I did on camera, um, I actually wrote down um, that full spell, oops, that full spell in the book. Everything that I used, all of my intentions, I just wrote it all in. So now I actually have a record of the spell I did to bless this book as like the first thing officially in this book. Um, and now it's structured like a bullet journal. Like I've, I've numbered the pages. So now whenever I am inspired to add something, I'm going to add it. Like recently I was talking to somebody and I was reminded of the serenity prayer, which is an old, for me anyways, it's like an old Al-Anon thing. Um, and I realized that I could adapt that prayer, which has given me so many, so much comfort over the years of my life, especially as a youth, like as a teenager, that was a very comforting prayer. And I realized I can still use that prayer. Like I don't, I can, I can address whomever I want, but I can still use that prayer. So I want to add that in here and I've got other plans for this, but this was such an exciting thing. So again, probably my favorite spell I've done ever, or at least in the last few years, the most impactful, powerful thing I've done in a long, long time. So really excited about that. And then going along with this, I also was sent by Holly, the creator of the spread deck, which I recently did a walkthrough of on my channel. She sent me a pack of these Florida water wipes. These are awesome because when I'm getting ready to do a spell, one of the things I do as part of my routine is I cleanse the surface of my table or my working surface with Florida water. And I have a sprayer that I use that with. These are pre-moistened Florida water wipes. And so this was really fun to have at hand to be able to just quickly do that without having to get out my spray bottle and a cloth and do the whole thing. Super handy. So I'll have a link to these in the description box because she sells these on Etsy and I just thought it was so, so clever. Yes, you can make something like this yourself, but I just think it's really great that she came up with this idea. It's in a nice container. It's all ready to go and they've been staying nice and moist for me. So love that. 
That is it for magic-y stuff. Let's talk about makeup, body, beauty. Yes, one of my favorite categories ever. So we're gonna do a quick recap of the nail polishes I wore in September because it's fall time. So I switched right away into my dark vampy colors because I love that. That's like my, these are like my favorite types of polishes to wear. So fall and winter nail polish for me. I actually had to this last summer go out and get a couple of like not fall colors to wear in the summer because when I was reaching for these vampy colors, they were feeling too like dark and heavy for summer. Anyway, um, so I did get some bright colors now, but Typically, if you were to like just leave it to me and I wasn't to think about seasons and like when I'd be wearing the nail polish, these are the colors I'd naturally gravitate to. These are all Zoya polishes. I may have shown them before. Uh, but the first one here is Zoya Wyatt and that's what she looks like. So it's like this kind of like, kind of murky green color. It's really, really pretty. Uh, this is a one coat wonder polish. They actually had a line for a bit that was called one coat wonder. So you can actually just put one coat of this and you're good because it's quite thick um, and it holds up pretty well, which I like. And then the color I wore after that, this is also a favorite. This one's shimmery and it's called gem. And I think, I'm trying to think, is this the color? No, this isn't the color I was wearing when, I'm trying to remember. Anyways, this is really pretty. It's kind of like a deep wine, kind of reddish purple or purplish red. I don't know how you call that with like a bit of gold glitter and it's so pretty. And then this one is my favorite one I've worn lately, although it did not last. It didn't last though because I painted my nails with this and then like I immediately started cleaning the house and like organizing things and like decluttering and doing all this stuff and I chipped the heck out of them. So I just had to take it off. But this is Zoya's, uh, did I say what the name of this one is? This is called Gem. I don't know if I said it, gem, like gem in the holograms. But this one, this one that I'm talking about now is called Oliveira and it's a really cool green purple like duochrome. And I don't know if the camera will pick up the shift, but it like, you can kind of usually see it in the corners of the bottle, but it's, yeah, it's like this really like, oh, it's so cool. Let's see if I can get it to shift on camera. I think it's shifting. So you can see, oh, it's, it's a really cool polish. <clears throat> I love this one. So yeah, love these. Um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna wear next week. I might wear Oliveira again, cause this just didn't get a fair shot, but love those colors. Love Zoya polishes in general. And I also got a couple, like, I actually got three. I should've brought the third one, but I haven't worn the third one yet. I did get a, a few of the ColourPop eyeshadow quads from their Zodiac collection. <laughs> Because how could I not? So of course I got my sun, moon, and rising sign. I've only worn my sun and rising sign so far. I haven't worn my moon sign yet, but I got the cancer quad. This is actually what I'm wearing today, but it's, there is, it's called Tender Loving Cancer and the shade names are um, So Devoted. Let's see if I can keep this in focus and tell you the names. Okay, so So Devoted, In My Feels, uh, Take Care, and hard to crack down here. Um, and actually the astrological sign for cancer is imprinted in the shadow. I don't know if you can see it, it's in that purple shadow. So that's really cool. And so this is pretty, it's like purples and it's pretty. It's what I'm wearing right now. Um, and then Libra is my rising sign. And this one is called Peace Love Libra, which is so on point. And these are the colors for this one. I wore this one during the Three Fat Readers uh, talk on tarot collecting and these shades are uh, aesthetics amuse me uh, muse me muse like a creative muse um, social butterfly and balancing act and the Libra sigil is also imprinted down there in that coral shade so that's really pretty so yeah, I wore both of these. They're really, really nice. I will say I'm going to try really hard not to buy anything from ColourPop, at least for a while, because I got really frustrated with their customer service, like really frustrated because I ordered all three of these and I order these from the States. I'm in Canada. So I pay like a little bit more on shipping than somebody in the States would. And my Tender Loving Cancer palette arrived with the dark purple had shattered and made a huge mess inside the palette. <clears throat> so I got it. I took a picture of it. I sent it to the ColourPop customer service immediately. I didn't hear back for like four or five days, which is a little bit annoying. And then they said, oh, we're sorry about that. We will give you a store credit. And I'm like, I'd like, I'd like my palette, please. Can you send me my palette? And then, so I basically said that. I said, well, I, I just want the replacement. I don't want a store credit. I want to, I want the palette that I ordered and I'd like it not broken. And so then they pushed back again and said, well, we'll give you a refund. Well, these palettes are not expensive. This is like $9, like it's not expensive. And I'm like, so I have to pay shipping to rebuy, like you're gonna replace the product, 
price, but I have to then pay shipping to get a replacement product? Like that's not okay. So I had to push back again and say, can I please escalate this to somebody? And then eventually they said, okay, we'll send you a replacement. But I was really frustrated because this isn't costing them a ton of money. It arrived broken. I sent them a picture of it within like three minutes of opening my box and finding it broken. So it's not like I had it for a while and then reached out. Like I reached out literally, like you can see that I signed the delivery and like three minutes later pretty much was emailing them. So I don't understand why that was so tough to do. And then when I was looking it up, I found out that there was a lot of really not great customer service experiences I was finding. Now I was also irritated at the time. So I might've been like seeing what I was looking for, if that makes any sense, but it was disappointing. So I'm going to kind of try to chill on ColourPop for a little bit. I mean, I have plenty of eyeshadow. It's not a problem, but, um, but these are so cute. They are really nice. I will say this particular eyeshadow formula is incredibly soft. So I would say that's probably why these are so prone to breaking because even when you dip your brush into these, they kind of like, you can tell they want to they want to fall apart. They're just super soft, which makes them really easy to use and super blendable. Um, so it could just be a, a bit of a minor flaw with this kind of formula that it's so soft that like international shipping, it's just a lot to ask of it. So we'll see if they come out with something I really want, then maybe, maybe <laughs> we'll see. All right. The last beauty and body thing I have to talk about is Tom Ford black orchid. So <sighs> I am not a perfume person at all. There is one perfume I've fallen in love with until this called Flower Bomb by Victor and Rolf, which is why you never hear me talking about perfume because that's it. Flower Bomb's the only perfume I wear other than like magical anointing oils and stuff. But I got a sample of Black Orchid and this is not at all the scent profile I would have ever thought I would have enjoyed, ever. It's like a unisex perfume. It sound, it smells like it sounds like it's, it's kind of dark and musky and florally, but like seductive, I guess, kind of, I don't know. It's very like mysterious. I don't know how to describe scents. You can just watch people who know how to describe scents, like look up reviews on this or whatever. Um, but I was obsessed with it and I was like wearing it. I like to wear perfume before I go to bed. It's a nice self care thing to do. Like put a little perfume on and then climb into your sheets. Like you can just smell it and absorb it. And it just, it's, it's lovely but this is heaven. So I've been wearing this a ton and I had to share it cause I love it so much. Okay, so that's it for body beauty stuff. TV, so Peggy and I got to see the most recent season of Lucifer. Peggy and I love Lucifer and this was the final season, the season that closes out the entire series and it was incredible. I loved every day and second of it. It was amazing. Making time to just sit and watch that was like the biggest treat in September. It was just, it is everything. I'm not gonna keep talking cause I'll end up spoiling something, but it's just, it's incredible. And if you've been watching Lucifer, you have to watch this last season. In my personal opinion, it was very well done. It was so good. And I have zero complaints. Sometimes when a series wraps up, like you're like, oh, I wish they would have done this or I wish they would have done that. I didn't leave with that feeling at all. It was incredible. I loved it so much. I've also been continuing to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm now on season 12 um, that I've just started. So that's super fun. I think after season 12, there's an all stars. And then I think there's one more season. And then I think I'm caught up. I think uh, if you're a Drag Race fan and you know, if I'm right on that, let me know down below. Um, but I'm excited to watch it. I just have been really enjoying RuPaul's Drag Race. It's fun. It's lighthearted. It's the kind of thing I feel like I don't have to like give my 100% devoted attention to, to understand what's happening, which is really fun. I used to try to watch it with all of the untucked, like behind the scenes, like extra content, but that made it way more complicated to watch. Cause I was like volume back and forth between like Netflix and out TV and trying to figure it out. And I don't do that anymore. I just watch the main show and it just makes it more fun. I think it's like, I still get like, I feel like I'm still in the loop on the main drama points and I'm good. I'm good. So that's been super fun. Oh, and then the most recent season of The Voice just started. So I've started to watch that. I love, love that show. It's it's such like a heartwarming feeling watching these different stories. So I'm really interested to see who makes it through to like the final like live shows. We're not there yet. We're still in blind auditions, but at the time I'm filming this anyways, but it's, it's really fun. I'm loving it. Okay, let's talk food real quick. So Peggy and I recently restarted a meal kit delivery service because I love cooking with those. So we get a service here that's based in the Vancouver area of BC called Fresh Prep and they have like a reusable cooler bag. They bring your meal kits in and everything's like compostable and the plastics they give you are recyclable you can just give them back to them and they will recycle all the soft plastics 
It's a lot more like eco-conscious than the ones that go from further, come from further away where they come in big shipping boxes and like there's cardboard to deal with and whatever. And they're even moving, Fresh Prep's even moving more towards less waste. They've got now, you can order meals that are in zero waste kits where basically your components of your meal come in like these like little Tupperware style containers, like pre-measured and everything. So everything's always pre-measured, but pretty much. But you have these like containers um, and then you just rinse the containers, throw them back in your cooler bag and you swap your bag out the next time that they are delivering. And it's awesome. I've been able to cook some really fun meals. So that's fun to have started again. The other thing I have to talk about food wise, that's, I mean, this is important. Everybody just pay close attention. If you're looking away from the screen, you need to look back now so that I can put a picture up of what I'm about to tell you. But I've discovered the PC brand, that's President's Choice. It's unfortunately only gonna work if you're in Canada, but if you're in the US, you don't need this the same way. <laughs> okay, just trust me. But it is a PC brand version of Girl Scouts Thin Mints cookies. It is identical to Girl Scouts Thin Mints cookies, but it's at President's Choice brand. I can get them at the, the Real Canadian Superstore, which is one of our big grocery store chains. And they are so exciting. I'm so excited. That is the one thing I miss because up here we still have like um, scouts. There's, it's called something else. Girl Guides, I think it's called. Up here, they have cookies, but they have like two different kinds of cookies and that's it. And you only get one kind during one cookie selling season and the other kind during the other cookie selling season. The mint cookies are one of the ones that they have, but you can't get them the rest of the year and they're not quite the same as Girl Scout Thin Mints. But these, what were they called? Mint Slam Skits? I have to look down. Mint sl Slam Skits. They're so good. They're so good. I need more. I'm out. I need to get more. <laughs> And of course, it is also pumpkin spice latte season. So I've had several of those. So those are my food things I have to report. All right, we need to talk about random stuff and then we're gonna talk about books and then we're gonna talk about decks. Okay, so random stuff. I only have a couple, a few, well, okay, I have a few things to share. Um, I have a couple new pens I wanna share with you guys and um, a couple of Peggy bag things that I was enjoying. So in September, these are the two two pocket wraps that I was using the most. So. Uh, if you don't already know, I like to use these to take my, whatever tarot and oracle deck I'm working with throughout the week, I like to take these with me because they open up, they're Peggy's two pocket wraps, they open up into like a spread cloth. Oh, this one's upside down. Here we go. And this one that has unicorns all over it, and then you can use the back if you need more spread, like this opens up bigger, so you have a bigger area to lay your cards, or you can use this side, which is what I typically do. And there, she always pairs them so you have a slightly less busy fabric on one side, and then you can have your more like de elaborate fabric on the other side. But this one is all unicorns, and it says, believe in magic, and I'm obsessed with this fabric. I have a few things in this fabric, but this is my favorite. And it's got little stars up along the top e edge, um, before you ask, I don't, I don't think she has more of this fabric right now. And same thing with the next one I'm about to show. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean, but, and then this one. So this is the other one. I think I might've shown this last month. I can't remember now, but, or no, I showed this in my healing waves video, but this is all like sea anem anemones and corals and things. And it's so vibrant and pretty and I'm obsessed. And you'll see why I was using this. Cause I was working with some ocean decks in just a moment. But I love these and I try to rotate the ones that I have so you'll see repeating ones show up in my show and tells but I also kind of like think it's fun to remember which ones I was using. Um, and also that helps me understand when I need more. <laughs> so when I start to get too repetitive, I'll need more. That's how that works, right? Anyways, and then I also have two new pens to my collection of fountain pens. Um, and these are both very, very exciting for different reasons. The first is this is a fancy pen. This is the first fancy pen I've bought and I'm all about it. So this is a Conklin Endura and it is a abalone. Look how pretty. It's like all gorgeous real mother of pearl in there. It's so pretty and it writes like it's like I love I actually really love cheap fountain pens um, but this writes like silk. It's incredible. And it's a limited edition, so this one is numbered, and I'm really excited about it. It's so pretty, and it's so lovely and heavy. It just, it's really good. In fact, it's so heavy. I typically would like to write with my pens with the cap on the back, but this one is so heavy. I don't know that I, I can't. It throws the weight off, so I actually have to keep it not posted, keep the cap not posted, which is not normal for me. I don't actually know how I feel about that, but I do love the weight. It just feels really lovely to hold. Anyway, and then the other one... This is a Kaweco um, All Sport, which is a aluminum bodied pen. It's a little mini, it's really, really cute. Oh, I should have brought my wallet so I could show you how it works. But this one, you um, the pen just lives inside of here like that and you unscrew it and then it 
you can post it and then it's like the perfect pen, but it is kind of a mini, like when it's by itself, when it's not, when it's by itself, when it's capped, like compared to this one, un like capped, you can see it's quite a bit shorter. This actually fits in my little wallet perfectly. But the reason I wanted this specific one is because this is a collaboration with Sanrio and this is a Hello Kitty branded or collaboration one. And what makes this extra awesome, so it does say, I won't be able to show you on the camera because it's not gonna show up very well, I don't think. But oh, I'll see if it will, let's see. It's kind of hard to see. So it has Sanrio on one side, yeah, here it is. So it does say Kaweco X Hello Kitty on the barrel of the pen. I don't know if that'll show up. But what's really exciting about this is the nib because the nib actually has, oh, are we gonna focus, am I too close? The nib actually has Hello Kitty engraved right on it. Oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> what's really exciting though, honestly, about this to me is that this fits perfectly with my wallet, which I should have brought to show, but it fits, it fits perfectly. So I have a little pen loop in my wallet and this sticks into the pen loop and it doesn't stick up or stick out the bottom. It's, it's perfect, it's perfection. I love it so much. Okay, books. So I was really excited to read the Diviners series and I had the Diviners, the first few books, and I could not, just could not get into it. I think it was a little too dark, a little too creepy for me, and I like to read at night, so I DNR'd those. Like, I put them away, I'm not reading them. I didn't even have them to show. They're in a, in a pile to go to get rehomed. But I did finish reading Tales from the Hinterland. This is the book of short, um, dark, dark, this is the book of short, dark fairy tales that the other books by the same author are based on. So she had, oh, why am I blinking on the name? Melissa Albert, I talked about them in last month's show and tell. Anyways, this is really great. It's a fun read, especially if you've read the other two books by the same author and her writing is absolutely stunning. Or if you just like dark fairy tales, this is an excellent read. It's again, a little bit scary for me. So I'm probably going to not try to um, read anything too scary or thrillery for a while because I do my reading at bedtime before I go to sleep. And this is a lot, this is a lot for me. So that's a no for any more of that for me. <laughs> The other book though that I did, and this is kind of moving into a totally different category, but this is the book Soul Color by Emma Burley. This was actually sent to me by Liminal 11. They published this book. Um, it's, one of, it's one of theirs. I really, really wanted to play with it. And it is basically a guided sort of watercolor class, I guess you could say, in a book. But it takes you through all these like different watercolor exercises and mindfulness exercises. But when I tell you, like I sat down, I've even got all my days, the days of the different course, and it's organized by days. So it's like week one, day one, week two, day three, that kind of thing, right? But I've got like all of these different painting, paintings that I did just doing the extra, oh yeah. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I'm probably gonna cut these into like bookmarks or something, because I think these came out so good. This is one of the exercises I did in that book. This is some more play. Some of these look really weird, but they were just like, just learning how different colors like work together and like how the paint moves and stuff. These I can also do something with, like paint some scenes or something over them. Um, these were my attempts at making, these look so much better now that they've like dried and they look better on camera than in real life, but this one's my favorite. But I was trying to do like a cloudy, different kind of cloudy backgrounds, these ones. This was something else entirely I was playing with. Um, and some more things, some like playing with values and just all kinds of stuff. This was like a different kind of like playing with um, not complementary colors, but contrasting colors, I think. The ones that normally turn into brown, but like playing with them anyways and making these like birds was one of the exercises. It was, it was a lot of fun. So I did that, it was awesome. So I really, really love this. If you want to get into some maybe mindfulness exercises and also maybe learn a little bit about watercolor painting, check this out. It was, it's, I've been really, really enjoying it. So that had to go into here for my favorites. And finally, let's talk decks. So I'm just gonna quickly go over the decks that I used in September and my thoughts on them and kind of where I'm sitting at it with them right now. So I will say I'm completely done with the whole one deck a month thing. I think I stopped that in like July and just kind of flopped. I missed rotating my decks weekly, so I'm definitely back to a weekly rotation and it's working so much better for me. But what I did was one month in September, I worked just with the Enchanted Tarot. Now this is the 25th anniversary edition. This edition is actually really hard to get your hands on now, unfortunately, but at least I find like it is. I don't know if it's just temporarily out of stock or if it's permanently out of stock. 
Um, I did do a walkthrough of this deck on my channel, but this was a lot of fun to work with. And I basically just did three card spreads with this deck and that's it. And it was great. Uh, in any case, we got interrupted by the door, but in any case, this is a really, really beautiful deck. I genuinely enjoyed my time with it. It's super special. If you can get your hands on it, I definitely recommend it. One of the things I found the best about this deck is the guidebook. So this is a deck by Amy Zerner and Monty Farber, and they did such a great job with the book. So throughout the book, you get um, a section called The Dream, The Awakening, and The Enchantment. Each one does something different, but the enchantment section actually suggests basically magical work you can do based on that card, which I don't think is something a lot of people know about this deck. At least I didn't know that about this deck. And it's a really cool feature because you could totally use this deck as a spell deck. Like basically, draw a card based on or pick a card based on a situation you're going through that you think that card aligns with the situation you're going through and then take a look at the enchantment section and you might find yourself empowered to do some magical work around that particular energy and it does it all through the minor arcana too which I think is super fantastic. There's also like a quick read section which gives you two different styles of reading from that card. One is a message so it's more personal growth based or kind of like into the present moment kind of based. And then there's also an outcome based reading. So that's a more predictive style uh, meaning for the card, which is a really cool way to funk to sort of organize something like this, because if you're the type of person to read predictively, then you want that kind of message in your guidebook. But if you're the type of person that doesn't read that way, then that can be distracting. So they give you both, which I think is really smart, super cool. And while I was up answering the door, I remember to grab my wallet so I could show you my Hello Kitty pen, sorry, momentary distraction, but I just wanted to show you how it fits. Look at how like perfectly my little pen fits because my wallet, I actually keep a little book in here. It's like a, tra it's like a little tiny traveler's notebook, my wallet, but I keep a little notebook in here so that I can make grocery lists or whatever and it's perfect. So this pen fits perfectly in there. Okay, anyways, back to tarot, back to tarot. So the Enchanted Tarot was so much fun to play with. I think the week after that, I can't remember what order this was in, but one other week in September, I worked with the Line Strider Tarot. So this is a deck by um, Mate of Shuffle Tarot or of Dextiny is the other name of their um, business. Here's the thing I'll say about this, this deck. I think it's really cool. And in person, it's especially cool, I feel like. But basically you get these gorgeous full color scenes and then these white lines that add context to the scene. But a comment that came through several times or from several people rather on my walkthrough is that it's actually really hard to see those white lines on camera. And I have to say, I do agree. I think that if you do client readings like I do where they're on video or you do a lot of Instagram stuff, I feel like this is actually not always the easiest deck to photograph, particularly when you have the white lines on lighter backgrounds like in this card. It's really quite hard to see, but there's a finger out here and there's a butterfly resting on the finger. I do think that the take on tarot is actually really well done in this deck and I think it's beautiful. I don't know long term how often I'll reach for it though because of that difficulty photographing or getting the, the images to really pop on camera. Um, but in person it's like this peaceful, beautiful kind of deep breath of a deck that just I think is really special. I love the edges too. They're like rainbow holographic. Um, so I'm going to sit with it for a bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I did enjoy working with it for the week. It felt really calming and lovely. I also will say that this doesn't come with a guidebook and decks like this I find, I find with any deck actually, if I'm going to use it to read for myself, I want a guidebook because I like dipping into those perspectives and getting getting out of my own head a little bit and then getting back into my head, if that makes any sense, once I've read the guidebook message. I don't know, that's how I like to read for myself. Um, so I worked with that and then beside that, I used the Goddess on Earth Oracle deck, which um, I hope you got a chance to see my walkthrough of this deck, but if you didn't, um, I will have it linked down below. Oh my gosh, this deck is so empowering and beautiful. I also used this deck with really powerful, like to really powerful effect um, in my monthly live reading event that I do for Magical Unicorns in our channel membership. And the readings that came through with this were so gorgeous, impactful. Um, this is such a well done deck and I really genuinely love it so much. The book is incredible. The messages in the book are incredible. The energy that comes through from each of these women who modeled is incredible. The keywords on the cards are wonderful for intuitive reading. Like I have no complaints. This was such a joy to use. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to be reaching for it 
much more than I reach for a lot of decks that fall into this kind of category for me. So that's really exciting. Another pairing, this is probably, there's two pairings coming up that I've been excited about for a long, long time. And this is the first of them. And it is the Tarot of the Abyss by Anna Turian, paired with the newest edition of her Oracle deck, Oracle of Echoes. Check out this bag match. Okay, anyways. Um, so I've loved Anna Turian's Oracle of Echoes for a long time. Um, I do like the backings on the first edition better, but um, this new edition and the extra cards is just gorgeous. I love that there's no banners along the bottom so you get kind of more artwork. It's just, it's just a beautiful, emotive, um, Oracle deck that I feel like works well in a variety of readings and situations and it's just it's a fantastic indie Oracle deck if you're looking for like a good sort of intuitive reader of an Oracle deck this is the one she does have like a digital guidebook that you can get with the deck when you purchase it but I've, I've, I've never really used it. I read through it when I first got the deck, but I have since then never felt, I've never felt like I didn't get the message I needed to get from these cards without it. And to me, that's usually a hallmark, hallmark of a really, really good Oracle deck. I do love decks that have incredible, beautiful, meaty guidebooks too, but they feel different, not worse, just different. And decks like this tend to be really easy for me to reach for when I'm doing readings because I know that I'll get what I need with very little external input. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. But in any case, the Terror of the Abyss, this was really hard for me to get my hands on because it's been, US Games has been having, has been affected uh, quite severely, I think, by all the shipping and production delays that have been happening because of plague times. But in any case, uh, the Oracle, or excuse me, the Terror of the Abyss is gorgeous. I ended up doing quite a deep dive walkthrough of this deck, but working with it, it was just such a joy. Um, I don't know ultimately if, I I don't think it's, I, I do think in a way I kind of love it in spite of the fact that it's monochromatic <laughs> because monochromatic decks and I are just usually not a thing. But the work, the line work and the shading and the emotion in these images, it just, I think color would have pulled away from it a little bit. And I'm not the type of person to normally say that. I also really love that the color of this deck is very, it's very cream on black as opposed to like black and white so it's not such a stark do I have something bright white to show I guess the soul color book is kind of bright white like you can definitely see like it's creamy it's like more parchmenty colored almost which is really lovely I freaking love this deck and I just realized that my bag for it is somewhere and I don't know where so I have to find it because it was it was in my favorites basket without its without its home and now I have to find its home it has a bag that matches it perfectly, uh, and I love it. But they, these were a lot of fun to read with. They were great working decks. They read well together. Um, they played off of each other really nicely. The flow was really good, and I didn't really hesitate when I was getting messages from either of these. There was no. It was just seamless, which is what I really love when I pull out decks, and they're just they just read smoothly and easily with a minimum of effort. That is what I like. And then the last pairing I worked with in September. This is very exciting. This is very exciting was my Healing Waves Tarot. Oh, so there's a good chance this deck is just going to live out on my Oceany Altar. But this deck is really beautiful. Trust me, you guys, <clears throat> I know it's, it's hard because this deck is out of print now and the creator has no plans to do any other printings in the future. Um, but keep your eyes on eBay. Keep your eyes on eBay because people are going to be receiving their decks still. Not everybody's gotten them yet. I just got mine um, a couple weeks ago. So not everybody has gotten theirs yet. And as people get them and they sit with them for a while, they some people will resonate with the deck and want to keep it long term. And some people will not. So they will end up moving it along. But this was, it's just a really fun, brightly colored, kind of spacious feeling, oceany deck. It's absolutely stunning. I don't want to stand up, but if you go check my video of this, I also shared a piece of original artwork that the creator sent me that I will treasure forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm so touched that they did that. That was such a sweet gesture. And I am, I, I just, I love this, this deck. So I'm really excited that I have it. I'm going to gently onto the bed so that I remember to put it on my ocean altar because that's where it's headed. But beside it, I actually used and can we talk about this bag match for a second? Look at sea turtles, sea turtles. I use the whispers from the ocean oracle deck. 
this deck oh my gosh they worked so well together and this deck is so beautiful i love this cardstock blue angels new matte cardstock is everything i've talked about it before i wish i knew which decks were available in this cardstock because i really want a copy of the hero's journey dream oracle in this cardstock but i don't know how to know i don't know how to know i don't know how to tell um if the ones that are currently available for sale are in this new cardstock or if they're going to come out in this new cardstock but i love it it's like really silky smooth it's lovely, it's matte, it's gorgeous, it's everything, I love it. So those were all the decks that I worked with in the month of September. Um, there's one more, but it's kind of bridging September to October, so I'll probably talk about that one next month. That's the one that I'm working with at the time I'm filming this, a couple days before the month ends. But thank you so, so much for hanging out with me. I will have links to all the things that I talked about in the description box down below so that you can check those out. Thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me. These are a lot of fun to do. I look forward to making this video every single month and I can't foresee myself ever not wanting to make this video. I mean, famous last words, but like I really, really enjoy show and tell. That's basically what YouTube started out for me as, like grown up show and tell, except is it, how grown up is it really? Like it's me, so you know, <laughs> it's only so grown up, but I love it so much. So thank you for being here and watching it and like letting me do these because if nobody was watching them, they wouldn't be nearly as fun. So thanks for hanging out with me while I showed you all the things and talked about all the things from September. I am so excited for October, bring it on. I am, I love October. It's one of my favorite months of the year. So I am sure I will have tons of stuff to talk about next month too. And until then, thank you all so, so much and may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye guys.